connected. And then he comes to me, he touches me here, and he says, but remember, I am your brother. And at that moment, everything shifted. Everything shifted. Welcome, this is Chris Sadi, I'm Ginger Wagner, and we're sharing stories about relationships from the heart. Hello, I'm Chris Saari. Ginger and I work together at the Olive Branch Center. Ginger is an incredible photographer and just a heart-centered artist. I am a life coach, I'm a spiritual teacher, and I'm the co-director of the Olive Branch Center with my lovely wife, Jessie. The Olive Branch Center is dedicated to promoting the idea of the coming together of spirituality and global responsibility. Global responsibility for ecological sustainability, social justice, and the inclusion of all faith. Chris is a very dynamic leadership trainer and I've got to facilitate over 100 weekend workshops with him. And one of the things that's drawn us together and gives us such a strong connection is our passion about the importance of heart-to-heart -heart relationships. In my um, 20 year of work as a life coach and a psychotherapist, I have uh, seen working with couples that they might have a lot of things going for them. Maybe they're financially doing well, maybe they're satisfied in their jobs, maybe they're building a new house and excited about it. But if they don't have a close connection of the heart, that relationship of heart to heart, they feel that they are lacking a great deal. And ultimately nothing can replace that heart to heart relationship. It is the basis of the fulfillment of the, the relationship on all levels, on the emotional, the physical, the, the spiritual, it is back to here. If a couple can't connect at that level, that is what essentially they are seeking and wanting. One of my favorite stories of a heart-to-heart -heart moment, um, like a lot of you, are, I'm a mother, I'm a parent, and the story is about something that happened with my daughter and I. My daughter, since she was very, very young, has hated making mistakes. I don't know anybody like that, do you? <laughs> I am one of them, I hate making mistakes, but my daughter, even at two or three, if she got a cut, a scrape, she would kind of run to the corner. She was just so ashamed of anything being broken or, or injured or not, not just right in her life. For me, watching her was really, really painful. And I realized one day how much of that was in me, and so I came up with an idea that every night at dinner she and I would share not only a celebration or a great thing that happened to us that day but some mistake that we had made along the way. It was so freeing for me and for her and we developed this tradition where we would over the dinner table share a mistake, uh, a lot of times I got to go first, and then we would give each other a high five and say welcome to the human race and it was such a beautiful beautiful moment of nurturing for me, of seeing my daughter, and, and, and that's what it's about, it's that heart-to-heart -heart moment where I got to see who she really is and she got to know that my heart, you know, I love her with all my heart, even in the face of any mistake she could make on any given day, and that was, that was so beautiful and such one of those breakthrough moments as a parent that I celebrate and I certainly have had my share of mistakes as a parent too. But that's one that I celebrate and just um, meant all the difference in the, world, in the world to me and in my relationship with my daughter. When I was in Lebanon, I was the facilitator of a Christian peace movement. And we worked a lot in areas that were devastated by war and villages that were caught in between warring factions and suffering a great deal. We would bring them medical supplies, we would bring food, we would work with them in building medical clinics. But one story that stayed with me and still is so vivid in my memory today is this. The radical groups that were operating in these areas did not want us to be there. They, don't, they did not want a peace movement to be working in these villages. So they put a lot of pressures on the peasants themselves to throw us out if not to do us harm. Yet, because we had developed a, a very close heart-to-heart -heart relationship with the people in these villages, they refused to throw us out. And they told the radical groups that we will not let these people go because we care about them as they care about us. The moment that touched me the most is one evening 
One of the leaders of the village, that was about six and a half feet tall and a very sturdy and strong man, came to me and kind of almost like pushed me against the wall by myself and said, I want to tell you a couple of words. I said, okay. He said, you know, we have been given instructions to get rid of you guys by any means. But, he said, at that moment I was quite anxious. I did not know where that was going to go. And I was very at his mercy. He said, but you guys connected to us from the heart. You connected with our hearts. And he said, that means everything to us. And because you came from here, and he pointed right here in his chest, because you came to us from here, I want you to know that you are safe with us. We will protect you. You will continue sleeping in our homes. You will continue to be welcome. Although we don't agree with, with a lot of your ideas about the, the peace movement and all of that, but you are our friends because we have that relationship of heart to heart. What, what we're really talking about here is the importance of going beyond the story and beyond what's right on the surface or the details yes. or the information we're being presented with. It's to really look, like when my daughter came to me, it was a mistake, not to get caught up in the details of the mistake, but to see her heart and see what she's hungry for and, and to see whoever we're in a relationship with what they're really hungry for and to, and to initiate that connection. So our invitation to you, starting today, is whoever you are in dialogue with, be it your wife, your husband, your, your lover, your, your friends, your children, focus on listening to what their heart is trying to tell you. Right, so in the next 24 hours, whatever the relationship is, you can choose one, you can choose several, but try to go to your heart and from that place really see the heart of the other person, not the details, but really go beyond that. Take that look beyond and go a step beyond so that you can really experience that intimate connection.